So welcome everyone to the first um, Talking on Travels episode. Today we're gonna talk about ski tips and winter getaways. I'm Karen from walkingontravels.com and I have Tamara Gruber from We Three Travel and Desiree Miller with me uh, so far. And we're also trying to get uh, Claudia from Traveling Mom on as well as a whole bunch of other friends who are ski enthusiasts and ski experts, as well as snowboarding. We're not forgetting all of you. Uh, so. Uh, Desiree, why don't you introduce yourself real quick and also tell us your ski experiences level. <laughs> sure, sure. I have a couple of sites, stressfreebaby.com and 60secondescapes.com are the two that I post on most. Uh, but I also contribute to travelingmom.com. And uh, last year when I did a ski trip, I wrote an article for Skimbatico Lifestyles, a uh, country personal site which I had a lot of fun with on uh, learning to snowboard with my son, which I failed at miserably, um, but he mastered. I'm a Floridian, so I had never been skiing uh, or snowboarding before in my life. I think the first time I did one afternoon once 20 years ago uh, where they told me I was a natural and I thought that meant get on the ski lift and go down the mountain. And I, it was a miserable experience. Um, I was lucky I didn't break a leg. And so I didn't do it again for you know, 20 years, and then did it, I've done it the last three years, uh, we're fully ski, a ski family, and like to go as often as we can, but um, I'm not a good skier at all, my 10-year-old skis much better than I do, and now both my 18-year-old and 21-year-old know how to snowboard better than I do, so, but we get out there as much as we can. <laughs> so, uh, Tamara, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us about your ski experience? Okay, so I'm Tamara Gruber, and I write for We Three Travel. And uh, my ski experience, I call myself the perpetual beginner because um, I, I think early in my life I went maybe every 10 years. And so it was like the first time every time I went. And the last few years we've been going as a family maybe one weekend a year, but that just doesn't seem to be enough to like get me past any any blue you know onto the blue trails away from the green trails so I, I have no desire to really ever go down a black diamond I'm fine with that um my daughter is uh, 11 and she's definitely already at least as good as me we can we can ski together now so that's okay and I don't freak out because she knows what she's doing and I only have to pay attention to myself which is why I've always put her into ski school because I can't teach her anything and I can't worry about what she's doing because I need to concentrate on what I'm doing. Um, but last year we actually went one day and we skied together and it was nice. It was good, but she will soon be, you know, better than I am and I'm holding her back. So I think we're just going to have to always bring a friend or put her in ski school until she's like 20. So I feel like I'm in the same boat as you <laughs> because, um, I started snowboarding uh, when we moved out to Seattle and I quickly then got pregnant and, you know, wasn't snowboarding and then I was nursing, so I didn't go another year and then I would start again, sprain my shoulder, then I got pregnant again, had my next kid and so I feel like, yeah, I've kind of gone down the mountain probably a hundred times on the bunny hills and that's about it. Over seven years, eight years now. <laughs> this is like, this is why I like mountains I'm that have a lot of bunny hills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amy uh, from Pit Stops for Kids has now I mean, joined us. <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us all about your experience with skiing? I am Amy <laughs> Whitney um, from Pit Stops for Kids, and um, I'm a freelance travel writer as well. Um, I've written actually a lot of ski content over the last three or four years, and um, I grew up skiing and um, ski racing, and then I've been in ski patrol, and I, just it's a whole lifestyle for me and my family. So we've always been skiers, and my kids were starting at age two and et cetera, all that kind of stuff. But um, they're all teenagers now. The youngest is 11, so he's almost a teenager, and they're all very good now. It's a huge hassle when they're little, and you're trying to teach them, and you know, you've got the all the gear and the bunny hill and the, uh, yeah, the whole thing. I've been through that three times over with everybody. So um, they're all now experts and um, leaving me in the dust and that's fun to see too. So um, I hear you when you're saying bring a friend to the kids so they can have someone exciting to ski with. I don't know, Amy, you're pretty exciting to ski with. I've seen you, so. <laughs> I am in that. I do crash a lot. So there's no <laughs> You're more of the excitement than I need, I think, on the slopes. 
Um, so Amy, why don't you jump in and tell us, um, what are some of your favorite mountains and ski resort oh destinations? Um, well, it kind of depends on what I'm going for. Like some of my favorite family mountains are definitely North Star um, in Tahoe and Keystone in Colorado. Uh, my absolute favorite was Canyons in Utah, which is now, of course, all of Park City um, Ski Resort um, for just the that actual skiing experience and um, the expert runs and the snow and all that kind of stuff. So love that. Also love Whistler very much. I'm a West Coast skier, as you can tell. So I haven't given the East Coast enough props yet. I haven't skied very much on the East Coast. Well, I'm finding a big problem that I'm trying to start my three-year-old skiing this year. And I found when we all moved from Seattle to DC last year. So my oldest, who's now six, had started skiing on the West Coast. Canadians start skiing, you know, when they're out of the womb, basically. So he started at two and a half up at uh, Silver Star Mountain Resort in British Columbia. And then uh, the next time he went was in Keystone, Colorado, which, you know, they're not allowed to snowboard there. They have to, you know, ski until they're seven. So here I'm now finding there's a mountain in Pennsylvania. Hi, Shannon. Um, that you know, they can start snowboarding from three years old to seven years old because they have a Burton ski uh, snowboard school, but they can't start skiing till they're four at every local mountain that I've looked at, huh. which is really frustrating. <laughs> well, it's really hard when you're a snowboarder and they're going to be the first person. I don't know how long they're going Well, that's why this year I was thinking, thinking I was going to start learning how to downhill ski, ski just to be able mm -hmm. to keep up with them a little bit while they're still learning yeah. and before we bring the friends for them. Yeah. So Tamara, why don't you tell us about some of your favorite resorts? I know you either just went to one or you're about to go to one up in Vermont. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm East Coast, so I've only skied on the East Coast. And which my friends that have moved, you know, out west, they of course swear that it's definitely better out there to ski powder, but it's different. So I don't know. I grew up. Um, well, I didn't grow up skiing at all, but my family went to Vermont every year. And so when I finally did start skiing, my first experiences were at Killington, which is like the beast of the East. And so probably not the best place for me to start because um, it definitely intimidated me. <laughs> but so then uh, we did Mount Snow in Vermont, which I liked a lot, but it's very crowded. And one of the things that I didn't like, like I went with friends and we went up to the top, but doing green trails, but they would wind down and they would always cross all of the other trails and there were always snowboarders. Sorry, but you know, you guys like come out of the woods and uh, you know, and, and I would constantly fall because I was just like, ah, there's somebody coming fall, you know, because <laughs> um, I get scared if I go too fast. So I liked, I liked it when it wasn't crowded, but um, it was just a little too crowded and I didn't like all the, the crisscrossing. And so then uh, a few years ago, we started going to Sunday river up in Maine. And I just find it's not as crowded because the Vermont ski resorts tend to get all the New York, New Jersey um, skiers and up in Maine, it's like you're really coming from Massachusetts, you know, Maine um, and maybe New Hampshire, but New Hampshire has plenty of their own. So even though it's a really big mountain, I'd, I never find it that crowded. We go sometimes MLK weekend and some people will talk about the crowds. I'm like, I waited maybe five minutes in line for the ski lift, you know, and and they have oh, a lift that's like just for the green trails. They actually have a special, um, they have like a beginner uh, lift ticket. So you don't have to pay as much if you're not doing all of the whole mountain, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a really good ski school. Um, and we stay like where you can ski out right to the ski school and start what from there. The so call again, call again. Or the that one is the Sunday, Sunday River, it's in Maine. Okay. Okay. And then, um, and then next, not this coming weekend, but next weekend, we're going to go try Smuggler's Notch in Vermont, which I've heard is such a great like, family that. resort. Yeah, because they have so many different things. To, like, my hope is that when we're there, we're actually going to do snowmobiling and snowshoeing and like a lot of other winter activities instead of it just being about skiing. So I'm looking forward to that one. And it, unless it's changed, we'll have a really great family for the kids to play on as we play on. It's like a huge gym. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean they're completely oriented for families. So yeah. I mean I think yeah. it's going to be great for us, and you know, plenty to do even if you're not hardcore. All right, All Shannon, right. why don't Shannon, you share some, some of your favorites? Some of your favorites. 
Oh, Shannon, oh, your, Shannon your mic's not on. Can you hear us? And Amy, it sounds like you need to turn down your sound. Turn down a bit of an echo. Yeah, yeah. I hear an echo with yours too. I was going to ask you. Ask you. It's weird. It's weird. All right. Well, let's go to the next yeah, except I'm the one with I'm the one with my bad Instagram experience. Oh, that's just got worse. The echo? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I hear it too. Oh, now it's good. Oh, no, I don't. It looks like it cleared up. Is that okay? I still hear it. You still hear it? Not now. Shoot. Um, yeah, I think we're good. Okay, okay, sorry about that, everybody. A couple hiccups as we continue to all That's right, you just lab. jumping from vehicle to house. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, I have, my daughter, my youngest does cheer every, uh, well, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, or Thursday, not Tuesdays. Now it's like Friday, Saturday. They're, in, they're all in competitive mode. So she's got an 8 o'clock pickup, and it's just about maneuvering kids. So anyway. But I was not driving. Nobody call in and tell anybody. No, no, no. I, I wasn't driving. I was actually in the passenger seat. I was telling Karen when I touched in early, you know, I had to have the, the makeup mirror down to light my face. <laughs> but it was a good experiment to see if I could do it. So. But the only thing yeah. is, at one point, I started commenting. I was typing back. But when I was commenting, how I don't know how I did it, but I reversed the camera. So then you could see the road. Yes. As we were driving down the street, I'm like, I don't Thanks know how to turn it back. I couldn't figure well, out. We all know how to get to your house now. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. When Snowmageddon finally gets here, yeah. we just saw the map. It looks like it's hitting the West Coast pretty hard, Amy. Uh, mm -hmm. You're going to get some good snow this weekend. Yeah, we have to put a new powder this morning. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Really Did you even bring the kids? To, I mean, did you go up? Because it's MLK Day. You guys head off. Oh, well, but you drove home. I was, I was in Portland, so we were in the pouring rain. But um, the rest of my crew was all here, and they went up. To, yeah, yesterday our local mountain was closed due to 70 mile an hour winds and snow. It opened up today. Yeah, the lifts can't really go up then. Where yeah. is Amy? Where are you, Amy? I'm in Oregon. Oh, I'm in Southern Oregon. She's oh, really, really close to Crater Lake, Oregon. Mm -hmm. I've never been in the middle of nowhere. In the middle, definitely in the middle of nowhere. Very close to the California border. Yeah, yeah I have never been. Never been. I want to. It sounds Desiree, good. what are some of your favorite mountains to hit? I mean, you're down in uh, Atlanta. What's yeah. you know what Keystone, there. Keystone, Keystone, yeah. Keystone. That's where well, that's the first time we met. I yeah, know. yeah, but Kidtopia, um, yeah. Keystone for a lot of reasons. But um, I just this year tried Beach Mountain here. It's about five miles from it, or five miles, five hours from Atlanta, um, and it was it was different than Keystone by a lot. You know, I mean, we, again, I'm a Floridian, so snow to me is foreign all the way around. Um, mm -hmm. But being in Atlanta, you know, we might get snow two or three times a year, you know, and we're happy if we get an inch or two sort of thing, but we don't want more because it shuts down our roads and we don't have oh, like, don't ice do trucks and yeah, we just don't have yeah. the equipment to make it you know, I mean, we literally are that town. Or we're, the, we're the region that shut down uh, oh two gosh. years ago. Everybody was stuck on highways over Oh, yeah, I remember that story. It was yeah. horrible. Hor it, was, it literally was the walking dead through Atlanta. <laughs> you just couldn't function. So, um, so for us going to Colorado, like last year we went, I will never forget, walking out on the back porch where, you know, we were in a house um, actually in the Keystone. It's a whole complex, but um, on the bus route, over to the mountain, but walked outside in the back and there was a hammock sort of up on the mountain. I'm like, oh, that would make a really pretty picture. We it took like one, two. On the second step, we were up to our waist in snow. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh like it was so cool. I mean, we didn't have snow pants on. We didn't have, we just didn't know. Oh, it was yeah. awesome. It was really, really, I mean, it was fun for the kids, um, but yeah. but that was fun. And, and Beach, Beach Mountain in North Carolina, was fun as well this year, just because, you know, it was a last minute kind of thing. We didn't want to have to book flights and we drove up. It was really pretty. And we did other things while we were up there. Um, so that was nice too. I've never done any of the other regions, so I don't know, but I would, I'd love to check out um, Vail. And isn't that where the Olympics train? Is that, which, which ski resort is that? The, um, the, the, 
the Olympic training facility is? Yeah, yeah. For well, you're um, in Park City in Utah. Yes, that's it. That's okay. it. Um, I have uh, there's a little gal named Winter Vinecki who you gotta watch out for. She's I think all of 14, 15 now, but I met her when she was mm -hmm. nine and she was running triathlons around the country with and really she started with her father to uh, raise money for prostate cancer um, oh, because wow. he was diagnosed and he passed away within six months of being diagnosed at his like, oh, birthday. It was really bad. Yeah. But she watched the Olympics a couple years ago and decided she really wanted to be an Olympian. And this is a gal who has set world records doing triathlons on every continent around the world. Um, oh, my she's amazing. But she decided, okay, well, I want to do it. And so she, she, committed and the park city um coaches the olympic coaches picked her up and have been training her for two years now wow. on the freestyle jumps yeah so she does I that and to the ski jump which is crazy it's so cool like she if you just stare down that thing it is so terrifying i can't even imagine like i literally i, I accidentally at Keystone, I accidentally ended up on the wrong path. Like I'm so green, totally, you know, I would rather just stay on the Benny Hill all day because I'm, I feel like I'm not going to die there. Um, but we got off at the little halfway, you know, they've got a lift halfway and then the one way up at the top for the people who are like ready to take their life in their hands. And somehow we thought we were on the little school farm trail, but there's a part where it intersects with the, the blue trail. And we ended up on the blue trail and I, I ended up taking what they call the taxi down the mountain, which is really a stretcher. Um, <laughs> oh, no. like, oh, I was the abominable snowman. I was like rolling and this guy was like, oh. and I'm, like move. And you know, he's looking up the hill, like, why are you coming right at me? And I'm like, I can't stop. It was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible. Um, you know, and then I was like, I'm good. And you know, it was funny cause they actually had just put a little four year old on the, on the stretcher that they call a cab um, on as well. And I was like, well, thank goodness, because then I'll just look like her mom, not like the quitter. Who... <laughs> I, I'm just riding with my kid down there. I, I'm not a quitter. I'm not, you know, so, anyways, yeah. But I, I really love Keystone um, for a lot of reasons. It, there's just so much to do. And again, you know what? The other cool thing for someone who's never done the snowing or the skiing thing, um, at Keystone, they had a night where they served us ice cream and they had the ice cream just sitting outside. Yeah. And like, you know, that would melt in five seconds in Atlanta. And that was the coolest concept to me. Cause again, you didn't need to refrigerate it or freeze it or whatever. So cool, so cool. So. Yeah. Hi, right, we have some new people that just joined the chat. Hi to Hannah and to Avita Robinson. Thanks so much for joining us. If you haven't caught up yet, we're talking all things ski and winter getaways right now. So feel free to jump in. I'm trying to add in a few questions. Tamara is too. And if anybody else has questions, please, all you have to do is a slash Q and then write your question. And it's going to show up in that little sidebar on the left-hand corner that you see. I'm still learning how all this works. <laughs> we're gonna, yeah. We teach by doing here. Yeah, we <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so how about what are let's say three pieces of gear you just can't live without besides your skis, poles, snowboards, and boots? So besides the essential things you have to have. Okay. Besides yeah. the essential things you have to have. Desiree, no. yes, Desiree, Glove. raising your hand. Real gloves. Yes. I wore little knit mittens the first year I was out there, and they laughed and laughed at me and said, "What are you thinking?" I'm like, "This is gloves where I come from." No. Remember, Karen, I think we bought a pair up at the very top of the mountain where um, at at, Key, or at uh, Keystone, that's like the tubing place, but they yes. had for $12 on top of the mountain. Down at the bottom in the gift shop, they were like $48 a pair. Oh, so I was ridiculous. like, score. Um, yeah. And ski goggles, because the ski goggles will keep your, yes. your, you know, the rest of your face warm. And then one of those knit things, which free. Keystone gave us for free, but they're really, but it's just like a little round thing that's cut off here but it covers this from here to here so as long as you've got the goggles that and the gloves golden and they make the face mask with the hood too so you can have it actually hood over you and then you put the helmet on on top of that yeah it's oh true. that's good to know because yeah. we're supposed to wear helmets oh, I do. <laughs> helmets on over the helmet goes over 
Yeah. I know. But I'm just reminding people you're supposed to wear helmets. Oh, and you're yes. good. I don't. And they're so much warmer. You don't want to go without a helmet. Uh, I know. Yeah. And I need to because I've had some pretty bad falls on my snowboard. You and should. Learned, you totally should. I learned should. how to ski this year. Well, my, I make my kids do it. So I need to be just um, like riding a bike. Be yeah. a good example for my kids. Good. And hand warmers in your pockets. The kind you activate, you know. Yeah. The ones you like crack open. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I have some in my desk drawer right here. We buy a box at Costco every winter and just go through them. I put them in my shoes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to. I was gonna so, say real ski socks too, because I made the mistake the first time I put my daughter in ski school and just had like thick socks, and the poor thing was completely frozen. So yeah. uh, even though I don't like wool, like real wool or wool blend ski socks. Yeah, those merino wool ski socks are pretty nice. I know REI carries all the ones I've ever bought. They're for Aunt Darn Tough. Those are the yes. Those I just bought another pair of those last yeah. year. They were amazing. I love those. And our girl, Lori Mac Brown over there, who also has a great uh, travel blab chat on Tuesdays at 1 p.m., I believe. Is that right, Hers Desiree? Is noon. Mine is at 1. Hers is noon. Eastern. Okay. And Desiree's is at 1 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays. Uh, so everybody go check that out because we'll be chatting over there and we always have fun. Uh, Lori's saying uh, chapstick and Bloody Marys. Always keep you warm. <laughs> right. I have to agree. Mm -hmm. uh, Shannon is saying alpaca socks are awesome from... Dahlgren. I don't know. I probably Dahlgren, just said yeah. that. Sorry, Shannon. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, for me, it's always also sunscreen. I'm very fair skinned. I have very Irish blood running through these veins. So I have to put sunscreen on no matter what. If we're going to, my kids are, you know, slathered in it. And so am I. Any bit of skin that's showing, that's what I put on. I always do like the chapstick for the face. You know, I have like one of those oh, uh, yeah. sticks that I rub on my daughter, uh, like our cheeks, because that, that, oh, it's only this that shows. Yeah, yeah, it's so windburned or sunburned and chapped. So yeah, definitely got to cover it up. And then anything else for you, Tamara? Um, no, like definitely the the hand warmers, the foot warmers, good socks. See, the funny thing about the gloves though is that I was told that ski mittens were the way to go because if you keep your fingers together, they're going to stay warmer. Um, so I have like thick, good ski mittens and then the, the hand warmer fits in there a little bit better too, but, um, I don't know. So are gloves better? Yeah. And even I wear, I wear mittens and then I actually have these gloves that go inside them. Amy might know what they're supposed to yeah. be called. So I have gloves that I wear inside and then I put a mitten over it. Mm. Um, cause like that's just, cleaner, yeah. Yeah, it's warmer and it's easier yeah. and really just mittens can't do it anymore. Well, on your you boarding, so you have to take the mitten off to buy it. Strap on, yeah, exactly. And you want to still have some gloves on. Yeah. Yeah. Shannon's reminding us that um, if we ski backcountry, we need to bring a whistle. And also for kids, always have water and granola bars. And I'm going to say that's for adults too, especially if you're just learning. It burns a lot of calories. Yeah. I remember my first day snowboarding yeah. besides being in an amazing amount of pain that first day, but it does get better. Mm -hmm. I was so thirsty and felt so dehydrated the rest of the day because I was just pulling myself up and going down and using muscles I had never used before in my life. Do you guys use the hydration packs, the insulated? I don't even know what that means. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the bladders, the hydration, like the reservoirs like you'd use for hiking? No. The, the hose? Mm -mm. You Any favorite that? brand? Yeah. We wear them we too, for sure. Oh, any favorite brand, Amy? Because I know you do a lot of gear testing. Um, the one we use is a Camelback because it has insulated tube. Um, oh, okay. get insulated tubes on other brands too, but I can't think offhand um, Does which that one. that keep it from freezing? They will freeze otherwise. If they do freeze and you don't have an insulated tube, you just um, blow back so that you're putting air through the tube and putting the water all back into the reservoir instead of being in the hose. You know, like the water's just sitting in the hose while you're not using it. So you've got to blow into the hose to get all the water into the reservoir when you're skiing and then suck on it when you want water. Yeah. So this is oh, why we're just giving Amy props because she's, she's got all the, the expert tips. She yeah. really does. Well, because, you know, you don't want to go into the lodge all the time because you have then you have to come back into the line and you have to go back on the chair or whatever has to happen to go in the lodge. Yeah. When I go in the lodge, I don't come back out. Well, yeah, and the kids too. Like, oh, they take all their stuff off, and then you have to put it all back on. But like Karen is saying, you have to be hydrated, so that way we don't have to have as many lodge stops. I'm the person that's out there that looks like the moron with the like the net little bag that you know you have the ropes and you can put it over your shoulders like a backpack and it's we'll filled with gear. the chapstick <laughs> and it's it's got my cell phone with an extra battery thing because the battery always dies in the cold and then it's got 
like you said, it's got a water bottle. God, God only knows what else. When you flip onto your back, that's really going to hurt with all that stuff in it. I've done it. I've done it. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, you know, and, and people are like, doesn't it mess up your balance? I'm like, I, my balance is so bad anyway. It's, oh, it's all that. good. Okay. And you don't have strap cleaning down when you get into the chair, though. If you're wearing a backpack, yeah, no, 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 it's, it's up. It's up. It's up but, 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 I want to yeah. say a quick yeah. welcome to Heather, who just joined us. And to just remind everybody, we're talking all about ski tips and winter getaways. Also, practice getting on the lift practice or getting off. Like, yeah. that was the scariest thing for me. I was sure I was going to get run over. In fact, my, I think one of my funniest videos I put on YouTube is of people getting off the lift at Keystone. I just stood there with my phone when I was done skiing, just videotaping people getting off. Like, oh, it's hysterical. It's very funny. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have so to wrong, but so right. It, yeah, you, I mean, you got to get out of the way is the thing or else you've got a whole pile of people, you know, no one can go by you when you're like, splattered out right there like goofy right there with the base it's horrible <laughs> oh my God. i always ski by the ski school and they always ask you if you're comfortable taking on a child on the up the lift and i'm always like no exactly exactly i mean it is like I, i'm anxious about it the entire ride across and then when it's time to go i'm like please god please god please god and when i do well, it, i don't know about skiing can you actually like click off both your skis and just ride up with them or do you have to keep them on yeah, you keep them on yeah okay. i don't think i don't think they'll even let you on if you don't have the skis no. on. because you can't do that snowboarding it's just too much of a pain i don't think they yeah, this is a good subject though because a lot of people who are either new to skiing or don't ski very often the lift is a huge deal and with their kids yeah. on the lift and everything it's like i've heard is a big cause of worry or fear or whatnot and and that's interesting to me because i grew up always on lifts so i, I never it's thought tough. about that when my kids are little they're going up the lift like dangling off it like whatever but it really is scary when you think about it so, it's terrifying, especially at a place yeah. like Keystone, where where everybody around you is amazing. They all know what they're doing, so you're oh, like no, really? the <laughs> one that sticks out. Like, yeah, I'm the dummy. You know, when I went to Beach Mountain, I will tell you, I was much more comfortable because being a mediocre skier there is normal. So oh, that's interesting. I need to go to Beach Mountain. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they literally stop the lift when somebody wipes out getting off, so that the next person's not going to wipe because you just the rest of us don't. It is all I can do to stay up and go straight down. But if I have to ski around another person, it's hopeless. So yeah, yeah, it's it's the scary. first time I ever went skiing was Sugar Mountain and I was in college. Sugar Mountain down in what is it, South or North Carolina? It's North Carolina. Um, it's very close to beach. Yeah. And I was going down the bunny hill. You know, I learned to ski because a friend of mine went, you know, pizza, French fries. That's what go. I, yeah. And you know, because that's what you do in college. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I went down, this little kid had fallen. I didn't know how to get around him. So I, like, do this amazing flip, you know, acrobatic. <laughs> I jam my thumb. I'm like, and I'm done. Going to the lodge. See you later. <laughs> so, that was me. I, they, they literally said, oh, you're a natural. So I thought, oh, okay, I can go right to the top. No oh, gosh. Worst thing ever. Oh, my gosh. No. No. I will never be a natural on skis, except skis on the water. I could do that. But See, not that's just even more blows my mind. Oh, that's a lot of fun. It doesn't hurt when you wipe out. That's it didn't hurt like Definitely. skiing. It depends. I didn't it didn't hurt when I wiped out skiing on the bunny hill, but it hurt a lot when I wiped out skiing on the green hill, which I'm told at Keystone, the green is really the blue everywhere else. And the blue is really the black everywhere else. It's oh, that's good more. to know. I feel better about that. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> yes, they, that's what I'm the Keystone people it. said. They're much it's more. It's like advanced. when you stop at Gap and you're like, no, I'm not really a size six. I'm more of a size ten. But exactly. That's what Gap's telling me. It's telling me it's a size <laughs> well, ten. <laughs> the color codes do vary from place to place for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll, it's generally accurate, but it does vary. At Beach Mountain, you can take the lift up to halfway, and that's really, it's not even green. It's like mint for Keystone. I mean, you can't even call it Kelly. You know, it's just not. It's it's so, it's I, I don't want to say lame, but it's it's a challenge for me. But you would probably be like, seriously, this is not even a mountain. It's a hill. But the next highest okay. up on the lift, the, prof the pros, the people who were teaching us how to ski board said, they don't even go down it. It is like Kamikaze Alley. I mean, it's crazy. It's all for Amy. No, no. <laughs> well, I'm sure she would, you know what I mean? Like some people, that's just, they're really good. And I, I you couldn't even see down. It was just crazy. Ooh, no, 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 no. Nope. 
So I like uh, Tamara's question. What's your funniest ski story? Just one. <laughs> okay. Uh, Just about yourself, not your children yet. Oh, no, we'll to- <laughs> mine is going to be about my husband. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> we'll start with the old and work our way down to the young. <laughs> trying to think of one. Mine was mine was totally taking the stretcher down the the cab, oh. calling the cab. They try and make you feel better by saying, "Oh, you're just calling a cab." I'm like, "This is so not a cab. It's a stretcher. It literally is." And then the guy who's towing you on the stretcher is whoo, whoo, and and literally flying around the hills, and you're like, oh, "Hold on for dear life." That and then watching the two year old ski by you, you know, that's always awesome. You know, he's like between his dad's yeah. legs and they're they're going 50 miles an hour down the hill. And like, oh, and really? dad's on like a modified board or skis yes. of some sort that no one's ever heard of. Yeah. So real quick, Shannon's telling us um, that blacks in the Northeast are typically blues in Colorado. True. So there's definitely a different okay. way to see things. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, kids are a trip. Our friend Chris Kirsten is saying, my husband took me on a green. I swear it was a black room <laughs> <towel." laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris, I'm telling you, I bet you crossed over. Yeah, long way. yeah, there's parts where they do like the green, you know, and it's not always really clear. You know, if you're the green, you got to go this way or whatever. But then the black is intersecting. And oh, somehow yeah. or another, you ended up on the black and you're looking yep. down and going, oh, God, you know, it happened. <laughs> I'm telling you, it happened to me. <laughs> She's saying, uh, I it. so Kirsten's saying from Kids Are a Trip, crashing 100 times on the way down. The black and telling my hubby every time I fell, I blew out my knee. Out. Yep. Final two hundred yards, I took off my skis and just walked it. Haven't seen we've seen the walk of shame before? <laughs> yeah. I tried to sit on my butt and go down on them. I was like, just like, yeah. just, you know, yeah. Oh we've actually we did that. Um, we went down to Massanutten Resort in Virginia last winter. It was our first time skiing back on the East Coast, um, and my youngest was only two and a half at that time. So, and he really wanted to do something. So my husband put him on a snowboard with them. They both sat on it and they went down like a little hill. And he was thrilled. He's like, I'm snowboarding. It's awesome. Look at Lori. She calls it the butt plummet. That's perfect. <laughs> butt plummet. That is so perfect. Shannon just said that, that you should get a mountain tour every time you go to a new place. Like I've never heard of this. What is a mountain tour and how do you... How do you well, I was just looking at that comment. They're usually free at either 10 a.m. or uh, like 1 p.m. or something like that, or 2 p.m., depending on the resort. And um, a resort um, skier or snowboarder will take you in a small group, like on a tour around the mountain to show you where everything is. And you tell them what level you are. And in my experience, you usually have to be at least an intermediate skier to do the mountain tour. But um, Shannon is saying, you can be a beginner, so maybe there's some places where you can be a beginner to take it as well. But it really does help you orient to the mountain if it's a big mountain. And you don't want to waste your whole vacation, like, not discovering a whole section that you might have liked for your ability level. So uh, we always do that, too. And Shannon's gotten beginner tours for her daughter before. We really need, like, a six-panel video. I know. It's video a thing that Shannon can get the mic to work because she's got so much good insight. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, I know up at Silver Star in BC, they did have volunteers out there. There was usually a little section. Yeah, they're free. Yeah. Yeah. Or you just go over to the ski school and ask them, yeah. hey, you know. There's usually a sign up by one of the main lifts that will tell you when it is. And Yeah. What's yeah. your funny story, Karen? My funny story besides, um, what was the one, my, my first time skiing? Uh, probably when I snowboarded. I don't know if it's funny. It's probably more tragic. Uh, the first time I snowboarded after one of my kids, I was going down the mountain. It was a little icy conditions as at Snoqualmie, uh, which was a local mountain for Seattle. It's about 45 minutes out. Never the best conditions, but it still worked. Um, I went down the bunny hill, I think two times, just trying to get my like, you know, footing back and everything. And I turned, I fell, I heard a crunch. And he went, and I'm going over to first aid. That's not did my story. husband not pick up his phone for like three hours after that? Yes, he did. Did not pick up his phone. And then he <laughs> asked me once I was out of the first aid tent and all bandaged up. He's like, do you mind if we go down a couple more times? Oh. Before we <laughs> <laughs> so thankfully it was just, I mean, it was just the sprain. I was out for the season, but it was still, you know, I was just like, really, honey? He's like, I really, we got a babysitter. 
Yes. And I'm like, that would have been me. I'm always in Die Hard when Oatley's the. I know. The, I like grabbed a magazine at the first aid tent. <laughs> That's my kids. They will not stop. I'm like, That's please, good. we are done. I'm so tired. And yeah. I'm like, fine, I give That's up. Like you go in and get a drink and they meet you in the lodge. Well, I did that at Beach Mountain this last time. I did that. I was like, guys, I am so, yeah. I yeah. Well, some mountains have better lodges than others. I mean, I feel like Snoqualmie was such a local mountain and a lot of local mountains, they just don't have that you know where you can just kind of sit around it's more cafeteria style yeah yeah you know, for Lori, there is no bar uh, and you know so that makes it hard but i feel like destination you know ski resorts like keystone um even silver storm because that was very ski and ski out um was really nice yeah. for that did anybody else for uh what is it up tree ski or whatever canadians are all it. over yeah. it yeah yeah, yeah. i i've yeah, that just means go get a hot chocolate and sit by the fire for me. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing at Shannon. Her husband's constantly trying to challenge her, which means he lies to her about the steepness of a trail. That would not go over well with me at all. Yeah. I like all her. Not, oh, no, no. No. I mean, again, I'm a crybaby. I am yeah, a. But that's not cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's right. I uh, when we were at Keystone, we had a semi-private. My husband and I had a semi-private lesson, and my husband, because he's been able to snowboard all through us having kids, is significantly better than me. He doesn't have that fear factor either. While well, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, if I fall and I break my arm right now, who's going to hold the baby? You know. Um, so I kind of like begged off and made up excuses that I had to go check on the kids when we were at Keystone, so that he could keep going on the mountain with our guide who was awesome. Mm -hmm. Like he took them all over the place, showed them all the runs that, you know, it was kind of like going on one of these volunteer guide runs. Uh, Cause he found all the runs that he would never have gotten to. See, I'm scared to death of that stuff too. Um, I, you know, in fact, I remember at Keystone, I interviewed the gal who was in charge of the avalanche dogs, the search dogs, um, because that was as an East coaster, you know, when you say, Oh, I'm going skiing, everybody says, Oh, be careful of the avalanche. And I'm like, is that a real thing? I mean, do I really need to be <laughs> that but, country, yes. You but know not. what though? I, I, the day before I went that second year I went, they, there was an avalanche and it was like somebody who was connected to the resort, their son or grandson died. It, it was, was really there. It was on Bill resorts. It was the grandson. Yeah, um, and very, um, very you know, so I was like, "Whoa, maybe I do need to pay attention." And they, I, but he wasn't uh, skiing front side. They said it was somebody who was off the trails first of all, because they go through the trails and make them safe every night and take care of it. It was really interesting to to hear, but it was also really helpful because they did give us tips. Um, you know, for, you know, if you do get stuck in an avalanche or, you know, if one comes kind of things to like what to keep in mind and damned if I can remember them now. Um, <laughs> but it was something like, you know, to kind of keep your face like clear, like enough room so you can breathe or what have you, mm -hmm. um, and try and stick your pole up through the snow. I thought that was, I would not necessarily think about that. Like I'd be in total panic mode. Yeah, whether um, they do it or not, I don't know. But um, yeah, but they yeah. have dogs. They, I mean, they have search and rescue dogs that are specifically trained. In fact, at Keystone, they have little like famous like uh, baseball cards for each dog, um, so you could go around and collect them and meet these dogs. My daughter thought that was pretty awesome. Yeah, but I think it's really neat that they're trained for that. So oh yeah, 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 yeah. My kids are starting to get into the backcountry stuff, so we're all taking avalanche courses and taking advocates when oh. we go skiing and. It's really important because kids around here just they just jump in the backcountry all the time and they don't necessarily know what they're doing at all. You know, like teenagers anywhere don't know what they're doing at all. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, all right. yeah. That's a whole other chat probably because a whole bunch of other gear that you need and our yeah, one of our on a gear chat. Whistler. <laughs> we um we were on the front side and there was so much powder. My son lost his ski. It popped off when he fell. He lost it so deep down in the snow, we couldn't find it. We had like six, seven people stop on their hands and knees digging down in the oh snow God. to find the ski. And I really was certain we weren't going to have two skis at the end of that day, but we did find it. But we had a shovel My because we had a in, in Utah. So we had our portable shovel. We got out and we, we found it. But it was a miracle because once the ski's down there, it could be anywhere and then like 10 feet by 10 feet, right? I mean, yeah. I can't believe we found it, but. Do you have ski parents, Amy? Isn't there some kind of gear for that? I have a friend that lives in Utah that she said that there's some, like a strap or something, so that when it falls off, you don't lose it in the powder. 
Yeah, if you're skiing backcountry, there is, yeah. It's kind of like the old school binding. I don't know if you guys remember from like the 70s and 80s. They used to actually, before they had brakes on skis, you would have a strap that went around your, like, your ankle and it attached to the ski so that if it popped off, it wasn't going to go flying down the mountain and, you know, hit somebody else. So they have something similar to that. But most of the time, it's now it's just like a backcountry ski where it's, it has a skin on the bottom so it wouldn't fly too far. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Shannon's saying they're called powder cords. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Amy, do you have insurance on your kids' skis? No, they're not. <laughs> not worth enough. <laughs> they're not expensive enough skis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies, let's start to wrap up. Do we have any tips for first time snowboarders and skiers? Take lessons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take le it's, uh, seriously, that's if you go out there without one, lessons, you're not. Yeah. It's yeah. Awesome. More than one for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I would say stay hydrated, eat, stretch, especially if you're going to snowboard. You need to stretch before, during, and after because those muscles you've never seen before are going to pop out. And, and if, if your whole family is, is new to skiing or fairly even in ability level, take a private lesson as a family. It's usually actually cheaper because oh, it's you get up to six yeah. people in a lesson and yeah. Yeah. then you get the full attention of the instructor and you get front of the line access all day. And it's, we've done it more than once. It's a good idea. Awesome. Yeah. All right. And should you rent or buy once you're into it? Oh, buy eventually. Or I would say rent or bring if you're going destination. Or do a um, you know, growing program. You know, like a, a ski at a ski um, equipment shop. You can basically buy a membership for like three years for your kids, and then every year you can trade into your skis and get a new size. Okay. And you're just paying one flat fee, and you get three years worth of skis and boots and everything until your kids oh, nice. build it, and then you do it. Yeah. We rent. So what if I'm? Yeah. Oh, sorry. What if I'm starting my kids at six years old and obviously they're going to keep growing till they're. Well, you can redo it like two or three times. Oh, okay. So you just usually a three year two. program. Usually in our area, it's a three year program. And then you either by the three years, you would like, okay, I'm going to buy skis now or you could do it again. Well, and Shannon makes a good point um, in our little chat bar we have going on that ski technology changes so fast that it is probably a good thing to stay on that three year plan so you keep up with it. Yeah. We, we rent gear, but we buy the clothes, if that makes okay. any sense. But we yep. don't buy them from, you know, from the name, brand name shops. Like when we were at Beach Mountain, they actually were selling their rental clothes. Yeah. Um, Ten bucks for the whole. Really? The, what do you call oh, the nice. Bibs? Bibs? Yeah. And yeah. Ten dollars for like blacks. I mean, so we got two or three pairs, um, you know, just two pairs. That's um, going to be great because you don't need them otherwise. It's like when you right, go to yeah. cold temperatures, you have to have that stuff anyway. Yep, but. And we did. We hit Goodwill. Um, we hit Goodwill for, you know, like, again, just the, the pants or what have you the year before. Um, and, I mean, I you know, you can buy the fleece-lined leggings at Goodwill and stuff like that. So we've done that. But totally look at Goodwill for the goggles. Um, they are... And, um, oh, and another great tip. I learned this at Keystone because the goggles were like 50 bucks and up oh my gosh. Um, for ridiculous. anything worth having. However, at the ski school for the 10 year old, we didn't have them for her. And they said, oh, just go grab a pair out of lost and found people turn them in there all the time. And then they let us keep them. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, if she does that every day, we'll have six pairs and we'll be golden. <laughs> she probably has my kids because he lost his the first day. Oh, no. I, you know what? That's a really good tip if you lose your gloves or someone forgot them at home, always go to the lost and found. Yeah, yeah definitely. You're absolutely for the day. Well, no, that's what uh, Desiree and I experienced when we were up in Keystone at the snow tubing is, you know, we had like sunglasses and it was, you know, yeah, I feel like it was really cold at, up where the snow it tubing was. was you know, yeah, compared to the base. And so we were able to just borrow goggles that they had there and yeah. it just made it so much more comfortable. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, ladies, unless right. anybody else has anything to say, I'm going to wrap it up. Good talk. And th thanks so much for joining thanks. us. For thanks for hosting, Karen. No problem. Yeah, and we're going to be doing talking on travels once a week, usually on Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Next week, we're going to be talking about spring break getaways, because right now, if you haven't already booked yours, you need to be booking it. Uh, we'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs>